and welcome in to a Monday edition of the Backstage Pass, a brand new week, and of course, a lot of shows out there we get a chance to get to know uh, some of the artists that, of course, have been on this program and some of the artists that will be on for the first time, including tomorrow. Uh, Justin Favis is going to come on. Looking forward to speaking with him. And our good friend Chelsea Sulky comes back this week on Thursday, and our good friend Jay Edwards drops by for a full schedule of those shows and a lot more. Uh, you can check out the YouTube channel on the Backstage Pass, and we're also live on the uh, sportsguyspodcast.com. Yours truly back here as we begin another slate of shows this week presented by our good friends over at Bangtail Whiskey. Uh, check them out. Website is at the bottom of the screen to put your order in today. Also, our good friends over at mitchbacks.com, the official merchandise uh, provider of the show, and our friends at uh, Hank Jr. Productions. Uh, dot com. Well, I tell you what, Nashville was great to me, and you guys know I've got a lot of stories to tell uh, when these things come come true, and I had a lot of great conversations. And one of the the best artists that I met up there is uh, joining us today as a Nashville recording artist, Gavin Lee's back here on on the show on the backstage pass, brother. Uh, good to see you. How you doing? Pretty good, man. It's good to see you too. <laughs> yeah, we got a chance to chat some sports and a little bit of everything and music and. Yes, uh, we're up there at the Omni Hotel enjoying ourselves, having a great time. Hey, let's start right then and there because uh, we were talking before the show. Uh, you're in town being Nashville. Of course, CMA Fest just wrapped up yesterday for around the city. I got some great video that Kirsty Krause took that's on our uh, social media pages out there. If people want to check it out. Um, I guess during the, the whirlwind that CMA Fest is, you're in town for some rights and head back to Michigan on Thursday. Tell me about uh, kind of what's going on in town right now. Um, well, after I get done here, I'm going into the studio and, um, working on my next single. And then after that, I got a writing session on Wednesday and a whole day in the studio tomorrow. Okay. And, um, it should be fun. Stay out of the heat. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned a hundred degrees outside is what it is here in Texas. No doubt. And I tell people, I was like, yeah, I want to go run today, but there's the yeah. <laughs> point. I'm like, I'll just stay inside and milk the AC a little bit longer. I'm like, you know, obviously, I mean, I pay the electric bill for, my family, so let's just milk it a little bit longer. Why not? Hey, speaking of having fun out there, uh, this latest single, man, is for everybody, for all genres, and for people that want to just have fun, and hence the title, um, All You Gotta Do Is Dance. Tell me about this one and when it came out April 22nd. Um, well, this one was more of a, I wanted to write a 90s kind of a dance mm -hmm. tune that everybody would enjoy, and I'm not a dancer myself, but a lot of folks I know like to dance, so we could. <laughs> With that and we came up with hopefully something along the lines of a boot scoot and boogie type of theme to it i i love it like i said it does have that 90s feel to it when you take it back and you got the the different things you guys do with the guitars and, and of course a lot of instrumentation fun to record in the studio had to be right oh yeah it was a great time <laughs> <Fun by far. laughs> really quick now talk to me about the writing uh is this one that you actually wrote wrote on your own yes sir yeah, that uh, that writing session, probably one of my my favorite writing sessions. I'm not a huge fan of writing. Mm -hmm. This taking a half an hour pretty much wrote itself. And uh, those are my favorite writing sessions. So everything and pretty much all around was pretty good with this song. So I'm real happy with it. And, of course, generating a lot of buzz. Now being in town there, uh, now post-CMA Fest, it had to be a good weekend there, I'm sure, for a lot of people. I saw so much stuff going on. And like I said, one of these years, I hope to get my – my tail up there to enjoy it besides just the crs festivities uh where we met this year but a lot of buzz man in the city this weekend because it came back for the first time in about two years it was a, a pretty cool cma fest right I, yes sir i was actually not here for it but yeah. um, what i was told it was quite awesome <laughs> that's awesome picture yeah. where nissan stadium was busy and of course all the little shows that took place at the uh the bars and of course venues around the city. So definitely that's going to be uh, one of those must do bucket list things for the show is to definitely broadcast live there uh, in the future as we did back in, in February with CRS. Hey, let's go back to the, uh, the previous single uh, last year you guys did or the single before that you released. All you got to do is dance uh, beginning of me, break that one down for me. Kind of where the, the backstory of that one came from. Uh, the backstory behind that was um, actually, I heard the song by Riley green called bury me and Dixie. Mm-hmm. And it was supposed to kind of come out like that, you know, seeing as I'm from Florida and wanted to, you know, kind of write a ballad about how I grew up. And um, it actually ended up being more of a ballad about life. And a lot of those things in that song were actually 100 percent true, um, including right there on the stepdad pass and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, it was 
it definitely took a turn for I, I could I could say the better. Um, you know, that song that I wanted to write about was already wrote. So mm -hmm. the beginning of me is one song that I hold pretty close to myself. I like that one a lot. Yeah, you've got that. A lot of the songs that you put out there too really have just different feels to them, and, and something for everybody out there. I like to say, but you've got that. And we talked about this in Nashville up at CRS when I was there. Uh, a lot of '90s influences kind of remind the the listeners and viewers out there a little bit about uh, just how much heavily influenced you were on '90s country. Um, well, I grew up on it. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't a day that I wasn't listening to any kind of '90s country. I love Mark Chestnut. Travis Tritt, Hank Jr., all these guys that, you know, they've made such an influence on country that I feel I don't want to step on anybody's toes. I feel like, um, you know, maybe I would like to carry on that same sound and traditional sound mm -hmm. that they as well. Now you've done a great job with that, no doubt. Hey, your writing process is it's very cool. You mentioned there as far as like the, the writing itself sometimes is a struggle. The co-writes a lot easier because you get to kind of pick the brain of someone else that has some of the same ideas or similar ideas of what you want to accomplish on a particular song. I, I like to think of it too. When I go back and hear songwriters tell stories on uh, the show here, or just read articles, they say songwriting is just very much therapeutic. And I think that's a pretty cool way to kind of describe it. Would you agree with that? And what's your favorite part of the writing process? Um, my favorite part's when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I am not a fan of writing at all. I never have been. I'm not, I mean, I, I come up with really good ideas, but I don't come up with words and everything else usually. Um, I think for me, the more therapeutic process would be actually getting to sing it, put my heart and soul into it, and try to relate to somebody else out there. Yeah, which is good. And that's the way to put it in somebody else's hands and to kind of figure out what they kind of feel about that particular yeah. song. Uh, let's talk about this because I think you guys did a great job with the 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 album itself, the cover, the single, I should say, the the photo that was taken uh, with the American flag in the background. Uh, American Crazy. Tell me about that one. Um. Well, actually, that was wrote by the same folks that helped me write dance, Will mm -hmm. Rambo, Free Austin, and um, we came up with this idea kind of during COVID. Everybody was kind of it just had started, and everybody was kind of acting real crazy, and um, it was more geared for when you don't have to wear a mask and all this other stuff, mm -hmm. um, you know, we can just get American crazy type of thing. <laughs> yeah. It was, it's kind of a, it was more geared towards just, you know, being crazy again. Uh, yeah, which, yeah, I, I got the feel when I listened to that one again and again after coming back. It was on the, the my, my playlist to coming back from, from the trip up there. All right. Uh, a friend with a beer. I, I always people love titles with beer songs or uh, a friend with a beer. Uh, feel good song. No doubt about it, too. Love what you guys did with that one. Uh, let, let's kind of break that one down a little bit. That one was um, actually kind of just a fun throw together song. Um, Somebody said, hey, anybody, you know anybody with a John Deere? And I said, well, I got a John Deere. Get John Deere back. <laughs> we could use that. And, you know, I said, I like Bush Light beer. Well, we could use that. And then, actually, everybody in the video um, is pretty close friends with me. And a few of them are actually family members. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's it was quite a fun, really fun uh, video to shoot, song to sing. I mean, everything about it was just really fun. Good stuff to do, no doubt. All right, I'm going to go back to some old school uh, Gavin Lee here. Now I'm going to go back to, to one that I got to listen to up there, I think we were talking about. Uh, and it had the old Chevy feel to it. And old Chevy was kind of the, the old looking Chevy, the blue with the, the old blue paint on top of it and rust on it. And God knows what on the windows, crud, stuff like that too. And I'm uh, going back to 19 here, but I, I made myself a note saying I'm going to talk about this today. Uh, let's break down old Chevy. And then of course uh, the one after that I loved was, was, was Dixie dreaming. Um, well, old Chevy. So when I was, uh, would have been a senior in high school, I uh, made a bet with my stepfather that I, he had this old Chevy pickup that just beat the crap and, uh, wanted, I wanted the truck, you know, real bad. And he made a bet with me. If I got a three, five or higher GPA, I could have the truck. <laughs> so I, Pretty much cheated and got three eight GPA. I had uh, construction classes, so you know, pretty hard to fail them. And uh, got the truck and 
I've always said since I was a kid, if I ever decided to chase this music dream, I was going to write a song about that truck. And I still have it. It still runs and drives and <laughs> 270 some thousand miles on it. Mm. It's a, that's what that song is actually about. That truck in the video is not the truck. That's not but, a truck. Okay. <laughs> the truck, me and him standing next to each other. That's the red and white Chevy pickup. I like that one too. And then I love the fact that you were uh, leaned over on, on Dixie Dream and the album cover. you got your hands behind your head, <laughs> uh, which is really cool. You seem relaxed. Uh, was that, I was going to say, what is that you're leaning on? And was that just kind of a, a cool thing? Because again, the song does speak to a lot of different um, ways. Of course, people that live in the South can understand, you know, Dixie and things like that. And, and you know, resonate with things such as Alabama and, uh, other other great bands out there that did just great. I say just down home, uh, Dixie music, but Dixie Dreaming had a good feel to it, man. Thank you, I appreciate that. That was actually a railroad bridge. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, I believe that was somewhere here in Nashville. I I wouldn't be able to tell you where, but yeah, I was an iron worker at the time, so I was like, I can get up there and you know do my thing up there if you want. And he said, Yeah, let's try that. So then the rest was history. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love that. You probably don't get asked that a lot too when it comes, but I paid a lot, pay a lot of attention to specifics when it comes down to album covers and things like that. I love it. I think the designs are are amazing <laughs> too when it comes down to that. It's very attractive in a sense that people not just listen to a song but can find a song connected to uh, an album cover. And I think that's just some of the best things. Or and a lot of people that don't get a lot of credit are are the people that uh, do the artwork for for you guys. You know, being artists out there. So I do commend the people that. Uh, uh, do all the artwork out there. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. All right, let's, I'm going to back up even further here because, you know, I told you my favorite out there at the time. And of course I still listen to it every day. I get a chance. Uh, everybody loves to go fishing, man. So gone fishing was something that, you know, you put out there in 19, when you made the transition, a lot of people were interested in what you were doing and becoming an artist too at the same time. And I, I tell people, if you don't like that song, you don't like country music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gone fishing was, uh, that was a good time. That was uh, that was kind of one of those dance uh, things where it was rolled pretty quick, and the idea kind of popped in my head. I said I wanted to write something that was like a barefoot blue jean night kind of feel. Yeah, and um, it went pretty good. Uh, you know, the writing process went really smooth. The singing process didn't go so hot. I actually lost my voice uh, when I was trying to record it, so I had to come back and record it. But um, that one in itself. A lot of people were kind of upset when I wasn't fishing in the video. And it's more of a, just because you're not fishing mm -hmm. physically doesn't mean you can't go fishing. It's, you know, it's <laughs> gone fishing is whatever you want it to be, you know? Yeah. And then, well, you said hypothetically in our head, we can say, you know, we're supposed to be concentrating on something right now, but right. look to my right and go, I know the water. I know the path. I know how to bait my hook. I know how to throw a line in the water. I know how to get it going, like I so said, wind things up. So I think that's uh, – mentally we can kind of forecast ourselves going fishing even if we're not physically doing it. That's what I got from the song. And, of course, uh, driving in my truck, having it cranked up, that's the, the vision I would get if I were to physically go out there and uh, take my, my tackle box and, and pole and just yeah. enjoy the time out there. We got a few more songs we're going to break down here on the show. Again, Gavin Lee, we've got a chance to meet up there in Nashville at CRS. And, of course, this great uh, – Nashville recording artist on his way up, no doubt. And of course, in town there uh, with CMA Fest. I hope everybody had a great time at, at CMA Fest. At least some of the, the videos I got from Kirsty, and of course, the pictures she took with uh, some of the show favorites like Brooke Eden and of course, uh, uh, Carolyn Miller. Uh, 20 was out there, I believe, too, as well, or 20. Uh, we just had a great time with everybody out there, too, at the same time. I know Kirsty did. So uh, definitely looking forward to putting that on the uh, bucket list as soon as we do that, broadcasting live from CMA Fest. Heard the crowds are great at Nissan Stadium. So if you have a little comment, drop it in the box here and uh, we'll definitely get that on the air. Tell us about your experience at CMA Fest if you went. And of course, if you have any questions for Gavin, uh, feel free to uh, leave those in the comment box. We'll get to as many as we can too. We'll come back. I'm going to do a little rapid fire with him. Uh, always fun to do. Talk a little uh, sports and stuff like that too as well. And of course, uh, another, a few questions here. On the backstage pass right now, a word from Banktail Whiskey and our friends over at MitchMax.com. Stay tuned for more. We're coming back. The Bangtail Pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish.
Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrell and his co-host, Kirsty Krause, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And, of course, uh, Monday through Friday, full slate of shows this week and next. And, of course, all the way up, I'll make, I guess, about the uh, middle of July, somewhere in there. So uh, stay tuned. You never know who's coming by here, of course. And tomorrow, I know Texas country artist uh, Morgan Ashley is going to stop by. And, then of course, uh, Nashville recording artist, uh, new single out, too. He's going to be on, I think, Good Day Atlanta coming up tomorrow. Justin Fabus is going to join us tomorrow. Looking forward to that one at uh, 3.30. I think Friday's a triple header. So, yeah, Gavin, I'm, I'm staying uh, – <laughs> pretty busy on the show it's, just, it's, it's crazy it's like you bet and lead off for the week and then there comes like six others it's a full nine nine guys with a dh it's a good thing you know that's perfect <laughs> that's a good thing uh back here presented by our good friends at bangtail whiskey uh, mitchmax.com and hank jr productions a uh, nashville recording artist gavin lee kind enough to join us here on a monday set the tone for the week uh all right i know we had a chance to talk some sports a little bit uh, we we're up there uh so i'm gonna throw it right back at you here teams you follow college or pro uh, who are they Braves, all day long. I knew that too. It was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the answer to the only question I'm asking. But uh, and we had a little rift about that too in Nashville too about that Astros Braves World Series. But uh, hey, it was kind of kind of weird because I actually went to a game to see the Strohs on Saturday. A buddy of mine had, had issued me some tickets, and we went out there. I took my daughter and just kind of enjoyed the the time there. But brother, we, we couldn't even hit the broad side of a barn and lost to Miami five to one. Lost the series two out of three. And I thought back to that World Series. I went, why did we lose? Oh yeah. We couldn't hit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Atlanta hit. Atlanta, we yeah, pitched yeah. pretty good. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's one important just ingredient in the game that you've got to have is you got to be able to swing the bats. And I'm like, well, we couldn't hit Miami uh, Miami pitching for that uh, particular weekend. But, uh, yeah, we came alive yesterday. Verlander got the win. And, of course, the offense busted out for nine uh, runs. Altuve did pretty good, too. Well, I tell you this. Uh, let me ask this because looking at it this year, um, not for a lack of talent. They had some injuries here and there. But. Uh, the Mets, man, holy crap, in the East Division have have looked up in, what, six, seven-game lead now, and Atlanta's looking up going, we, we need to start winning some ball games. Yeah, we, we won't talk about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> I'm not real happy at the moment. Um, okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, last game I watched, I think it was about three or four weeks ago, I, uh, I got – Irritated. To say that. Yeah, that's a good word for it. We'll say that. <laughs> I like that word. Good choice of words there. When they lost Saturday, I was four letter words and things that we're not going to say on this broadcast here, but there were some yeah. things. And my buddies looked at me, a couple of buddies went to me. Yeah, it's just, uh, and I did my little rant. They have the call in shows at the end of the show where you listen to the station. And you're like, I'm just going to call in and vent for a little bit. And I got to vent and talk about those things a little bit. So, uh, yeah, and then they come out and play well. Sunday tonight with the Texas Rangers on the road before coming back uh, this weekend. Uh, by the way, happy early Father's Day to all the dads out there. You know, my first time uh, being a dad, so definitely going to enjoy, enjoy this weekend, man. Like you said, every weekend you're off, you just try to enjoy the best way you can. Hey, tell me about uh, – now, this had to be a lot of fun when you guys put this together. One, I wanted to ask you if you shot a music video with it, but two, the song came out with as much fun as you can have with uh, Millionaire in Mexico. Tell me how this came to be because this was a lot of fun, and this was after Gone Fishing, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. That um, that one was shot in my hometown, Fort Myers, Florida. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of alcohol was involved in that, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was it was fun. Um, what little I actually remember, we uh, we went to a couple places, and then that uh, the hammock was sitting kind of. I'm the, right, right there on the side of the road. So we borrowed that for a minute. And then um, the uh, bridge that I was leaning up against is actually Fort Myers Pier. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a lot of fun. It was, I think that was probably my first time being around a bunch of people with a camera on me. And uh, I wasn't quite used to that whole thing yet. So in order to get me loosened up, I needed some alcohol. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was a great time. I love the title of it there. Again, that's the one you can find out there across all the platforms. Uh, Millionaire 
in Mexico. So make sure you guys go check that out. Also, uh, GavinLeeMusic.com. Make sure you guys check it out. Hey, speaking of live shows, um, good to kind of see people just out there again having fun and and uh, definitely attending as many as I can get to down here in, in Texas or Louisiana. Uh, for you, is it good to be back out there performing in front of a live audience? Yes, it is. It is. Um, they're talking. There's talk of a tour for me with, uh, you remember Dakota Foreman? I do, yeah. With me and him um, on tour together in, from August till September. Okay. So really, really looking forward to that. That should be a lot of fun. That's it's another, good. yep. That'll He's be. good. Yeah. Yep. He's yep. Just, like you, <laughs> yep. just like yourself. So What's I'm that? really looking forward to it. Yeah, he's he's uh, another great artist. We're going to have him hopefully in a few weeks and talk a little bit about uh, what's going on in his camp too. All right, so uh, let's uh, let's talk about this. Uh, lately, I've kind of gotten into a little bit of a cooking mood, uh, less eating out a little bit. When you like to cook, I mean, obviously we talk about fish all the time and uh, frying fish and stuff like that. When you do cook, and it's the Gavin Lee spread, what's your favorite kind of meal to put out there? Tenderloin. Okay, all right. See, I've not done that. I'm going to get some recipes from you and. Uh, figure out the best way to attack that one. That's not something I'm. <laughs> I, I can cook a tenderloin. I, right. I I can throw it down and I can throw pick it, it up too, so I don't burn it. But <laughs> yeah, I, I'll make it water right in your mouth. Uh, you use mm -hmm. a lot of teriyaki sauce, a lot of soy sauce, and you got to let it marinate for a certain amount of time. And yeah, it's it's kind of a secret recipe, but I'll share it with you. Share it with me. I'll, <laughs> I'll talk about that off the air, no doubt. All right. Uh, when you get some downtime, obviously, we talked about gone fishing a lot, too. What are some of the, the Gavin Lee hobbies you like to do away from uh, from, from music? Um, well, I love to hunt. I'm yeah. really looking forward to deer season this year. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of big bucks on my farm already, and it's only June. And I'm, I'm just chomping at the bit right now. And, <laughs> I mean, for June, me see a six point already. He's still mm -hmm. growing big, and um, obviously fish. Love to fish. Yeah, and um, been doing a lot of fishing these last couple of weeks, and really been slaying them crappie too. Big crop, big crappies. Oh man, and it's, it's good eating right there too. Like you said, and it's oh, been yeah. a little hot, but I, I still think people, you know, early in the morning or whenever the high tide is. Of course, sometime in the evenings, I've seen some people driving down. I-10, as I've done back and forth to Houston, San Antonio over the last few weeks, people out there crabbing, people putting lines in the water. Oh, like, yeah. You can't catch it if you don't throw it out there. And if you go out there a little bit, it's a little bit hot. You know, wait for the high tide, man. It's still pretty cool to get you a little catch. And then blue crabs right now, I see people talking about them blue crabs. Oh, yeah. I've caught them. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Yeah, that's a lot Good of eating fun. there. I was like, yes, yeah, dude, just go catch a few. So just, uh, you're like, I caught some. I'm like, no, you didn't show me your, your cooler. They're like, no, I just went and got them at HEB. I said, it's not the same thing. Yeah. Get them at HEB or the big grocery stores compared to a seafood yeah. market compared to going and catch them <laughs> on your own. So people just uh, get out there and do some of the legwork too at the same time. But it has been hot. And I know for a lot of people, let me ask you this too, because I always love to get different answers from people. When you're out there performing live and you kind of feel the, the gift God gave you, it gets in a little bit of trouble. What do you do to take care of your voice knowing if you're playing two or three shows a week or you know, four, five, six shows a month. What is the Gavin Lee kind of secret? Is it whiskey? What do you do to take care of your voice? Um, I got a honey lemon cough drops. Okay. I chew on them and they're still minty. So then I'll put a chew in and then that minty cherry feel. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's supposed to do this, but it kind of cokes it. <laughs> and then if I'm on stage and I get in trouble, I'll just have another beer. <laughs> Wash her down, right? Just wash her down. No doubt about it. Uh, I always, I didn't think we asked you this one back in Nashville, but uh, what's the Gavin Lee favorite uh, or favorite movies of all time and favorite flavor of ice cream? Ooh, ice cream. Oh, well, I ain't know ice cream. Probably cookie dough. Cookie dough. Cookie dough. <laughs> I haven't had ice cream in it's been years. Um, my favorite movie of all time is That's My Boy with Adam Sandler. That's, that's a good one. That's a good that's one. A <laughs> that's a hilarious movie and i was gonna put it right alongside happy gilmore because those yeah. two are just uh, yeah. fantastic you did so much out there too brother hey well i'll tell you what i love the the current single and definitely man a lot of good things going on in in your camp it's it's amazing we got a chance to to catch up there in in nashville and I always tell people man some of the, the best artists end up here on the program so it's a pleasure to shake your hand coming out of my little booth there and just to meet everybody over at music city media they do a great job with all their clients and brother uh 
congratulations on the single success going forward. Good luck with the right today. And uh, appreciate you spending a few, few minutes with me. appreciate it always. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You got it. And y'all be sure to check out Gavin Lee music, uh, com, and of course, gone fishing and all the songs that we talked about today. Of course, if you missed the broadcast, it's on the backstage pass YouTube channel and uh, at the uh, sports guys podcast.com. Since that's who we're powered by. No doubt about it. Tomorrow, Morgan Ashley and Justin Favis will join us on the program. We'll do a double header two thirty central for Morgan. 3.30 for Justin. Be sure to look up the schedule at Backstage Pass 409 or just go to that website, the sportsguyspodcast.com. We're live there every day uh, from 3.30 to 6.30 and actually right now 2.30 to 6.30 on some days. So be sure Friday will be a triple header. Looking forward to that. Maggie Ball is going to come by. She just did some cool things at CMA Fest. Get a chance to talk to Maggie Friday at 2.30 Central. So be on the lookout. Somebody new always comes in here in the Backstage Pass. Thanks to Bangtail Whiskey, MitchMax.com and our friends over at Hank Jr. Productions. Uh, you'll hear more from Gavin, no doubt about it, coming up here in 2022 and going forward. Until then, have a great night for you guys, and uh, stay cool. Do not go outside in certain parts of the country. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Avoid the heat. Take care. Yes, sir.